Mother, if you're this far into this episode, stop. Hey, thanks for joining the Escape With Me book club. Escape with me, Lizzie Sawyer. And me, Sam Reiner. Into our most recent read. Come with us as we evade reality and go into detail about a new book. We're going to be covering the book cover to cover, beginning to end, so there will be spoilers. Today we're going to Sleepy Side on Hudson. Originally published in 1948, Julie Campbell used her maiden name to create two new series for Whitman Publishing Company, one of which was the Trixie Belden series. Similar to Nancy Drew, Trixie is a younger, scrappy, teenager who isn't afraid to get her hands dirty, whether it's helping in her mom's vegetable garden or exploring the abandoned old mansion next door. As she and her neighbor, Honey, begin to unravel clues surrounding a missing treasure, they realize that if they don't succeed, someone very near to them could be in danger. Why don't you give the background on this? What do you mean? Because what ha- happened is I said, let's do Nancy Drew. And you said, let's do Trixie Belden. I said, Trixie Belden's a lot like Nancy Drew. My mom loves those. She liked them when she was little. I'm sorry. No, she clearly still defending. She stopped defending when I told her some of the stuff that happens in the book. She's like, uh, just stop. I, you're going to ruin my happy memories of these books. And I was like, no, mom, I read this because of you. You. <laughs> there are no happy memories here. Well, since this is a book neither of us have read, and of course we both saw this book cover around the same time, I thought the house would be haunted immediately because if there's anything with an old mansion. Agreed. I was very confused as to why the house wasn't haunted when we got into it because in my head, being dyslexic, I thought it was the haunted house mystery, but it's not. I did the exact same thing. I literally called it the haunted house mystery for forever until I read the front of it and it's the secret of the mansion. There is no haunting. I mean, there is, but there's also not. There isn't really a mystery, really. I mean, there is sort of, but it's not really a mystery. No. It's more of a scavenger hunt. I thought the girls would either be sisters or best friends, which isn't wrong? They kind of become best friends, sort of. I thought the mystery would be figuring out what happened to the residents of the house or some such kind of thing. Most hauntings are it's like, who were these people? What were they doing? And then they would either find a treasure or just something like that. But no. What did you think? The exact same thing. I honestly, the exact same thing that you thought is what I thought. Because if this was Nancy Drew, that would be what this is. Yep. I was actually kind of excited. It's gonna be like a Nancy Drew mystery where there's an actual legit mystery, but it's gonna be like a scrappy younger teenager, so it's gonna be more like rough and tumble. And it wasn't. It's definitely more rough and tumble. I mean, at first, we definitely compared it to Nancy Drew, but the more I read of it, the more it made me think of the boxcar children. I haven't read that. Okay, so it's four of them, but they're theoretically younger. There's some weird age timeline stuff, but it's basically they have mysteries, quote unquote, but the books are actually just about four young people going on adventures by themselves. And that's basically what this book is. They ignore the mystery for a majority of the book to have fun, unsupervised adventures. Now we join Trixie as she explains to her mom why she'll die if she doesn't get a horse. Writing that sentence hurt me a little bit. Because I swear every other book we've ever done, it's been something extremely interesting happening at the beginning of those books. I even remember you read the first line of it in the bookstore, closed it and looked at me and said, I think I've made a mistake. Literally, the first line is, Moms, I'll just die if I don't get a horse. I would like to smack you. You are not going to die if you do not get this thing. You will be fine. But it's a horse and all girls need and want a horse. I don't think it helps that I never went through a horse phase as a child. I had friends who went through horse phases, but I just... I just wanted a dog, so I do not understand. I went through a rat phase. I really wanted a rat growing up. Specifically a Dumbo rat because their ears are so big and cute. And now I get to hang out with my friend's Dumbo rats. He has two and they're naked rats and their names are Brandy and Candy because they're stripper rats because they're naked rats, but they're Dumbo rats. And so they have big ears and they're really cute. So we're clearly not the people to be reading this book series. (laughs) 
Yeah. My little sister really likes this book series, too. Your sister? Yeah. I don't know what that says about her. No, I think it makes sense because she's the same sort of scrappy, independent, doesn't really say sorry sort of personality that Trixie is. Yeah, but it makes it pretty obvious Trixie isn't a great person, which is something we figure out near the, I think from the very first chapter when Trixie's dad comes home and mentions he found the neighbor passed out in his own driveway way and took him to the hospital and they think he has pneumonia and he's so malnourished that he is probably going to die. And Trixie's reaction is good. I'm glad. Yeah, through a good portion of the rest of the book, up until he becomes useful, she's like, good riddance, he was a jerk. No, he's an old man and he's dying. And it wasn't even for actual jerk thing. They were on his property. He told them to get off. Well, yep, deserves to die. 10 out of 10. He's grumpy and old. Some people get grumpy when they get old. Get over it. It really wasn't that bad. I think at one point he threatened to shoot one of the dogs, but I I doubt he would have. But she's all like, I bet he would have because I'm cheap champ, pepper champ, pep, pep. Trixie's not a good person. No. But the book keeps trying over and over to sell. Trixie hates when anyone is unhappy. Lies! There are so many times in this book where she will straight up be like, I'm glad this is happening, or be super mean to Honey in her mind, and then be like, I don't think you're a sissy, even though for the first half of the book, every time I saw you, I called you a sissy. And then they try to make up for it in the, oh, Trixie is an unintentional jerk. Clearly that makes her sympathetic. She doesn't mean to be a horrible person. It's just who she is. (laughs) Because that makes it better. I don't know if it's obvious, but I hate those kind of characters. As someone who is an extremely blunt person, I don't sit around thinking horrible thoughts, get told why that was a horrible thought, and think, well, I said it, and it's just who I am, so it's okay. So let's get into it. I love that one of the first plot points that happens is Trixie wants a horse and a female friend. And what should happen that very day? Someone's moving in up the hill, and it's a girl with horses. <laughs> Crazy quinky dink. So glad they set that foreshadowing up in the beginning. Now Trixie doesn't have to die. Gee. Which, for the most part, I read this book for Honey. Let me be straight. I liked Honey. Honey was cool. I stopped liking Honey when they went into the woods and she was like, what if we meet a skunk? And Trixie's like, a skunk's not gonna attack us. And Honey's like, I'm terrified of skunk. I can't blame her. Have you watched any sitcom ever? If someone comes in contact with a skunk, they're ridiculed outside for days and have to bathe in tomato juice and it's horrible. So I can't blame her on that one. A skunk is not going to spray you unless you get up in its business. Yeah, but how is she supposed to know? She's lived in the city. Because Trixie told her that it didn't, which she's right, it doesn't, and Honey doesn't know better. So she should trust the friend that's lived here for ages. No. Trixie's the worst. Honey doesn't think that. I don't blame her for not trusting Trixie, because when Honey gets attacked by a black chicken, Trixie's first thing is to be like, Oh, it's not that big a deal. Why are you being such a sissy? A bird just suddenly attacked her from the middle of the hedge. I would be freaked out. But she's like, nah, you're clearly just city folk. I'd be more scared of a chicken than a skunk any day. The thing with Honey is she is the poor little rich girl trope. So she's overly sheltered. Poor little sick rich girl trope. Yeah, I feel like that's always in the poor little rich girl. Because if they weren't sick, then they wouldn't be sympathetic. Then they would just be complaining about being rich. So her family moved here. She's never been outside of the city before. Even then, she barely did much of anything. Except they make this whole time like, oh, she has such a horrible childhood. She's never allowed to do anything. Except she goes to summer camp and does literally all the things that Trixie does. Ride horses and probably canoe and all of the camping things. Go swimming. But oh, I've never been outside before. I'm so pale. No. But you've learned how to ride a horse. You own a horse. You clearly have stamina because you can go for long rides and jump over stuff. You don't have no stamina. What? 
It's just very inconsistent. You can't be sickly and be proficient in horseback riding at the same time unless you got proficient before you became sickly. But even then, she's acting like they've just moved out here so she can get better. This is her first day. And she can go around horseback riding totally fine. Even the book itself is self-aware of this fact because when Trixie later goes on a really long ride, she's sore the next day. It makes sense. The writer knows that this is a sport that requires stamina. If you've been sick, even if you do know how to ride a horse, you're gonna still have to rebuild some of those muscles, especially if you've been sick for an extended period of time. That's how exercise works. And horseback riding is a sport. It's so much more than just sitting on something and going somewhere. And that's the thing, the author clearly knows a lot about horseback riding. Honey's very inconsistent, but she's always really nice and sweet, so I like her better than Trixie. It might have helped if this was written not so much in Trixie's head, because I'm sure Honey has some unpleasant thoughts, but because you don't hear them, you just get a pleasant Honey. If we just had what Trixie was saying, she would probably be a much more tolerable person. But instead, most of the time we're in Trixie's head, and like I've mentioned, Trixie is not a great person. We're not letting your mom listen to this episode. <laughs> no, no, we're not. <laughs> I can totally understand as a kid reading this, especially as someone younger than Trixie's 13. So if you were younger than 13, I could get it. Something I didn't bring up in the beginning cover, the original artwork versus the redone artwork when it was reprinted in the 80s. The original artwork is so much better. I really liked the stylish choices they made in the 40s version versus the more sterile 80s version. Oh, dude, you're right. This art's so much better. It's so good. I love it. I kind of wish if I was going to have to own this book, I had one of those original ones because that art is great. Yeah, it looks great. Sorry, it's not an 80s. That was Nancy Drew. These books were reprinted in the 2000s. It started in 2003. No, that's even worse. Gracious. Which I'm not sure if they update some of the stuff for the 2000s. Obviously, Nancy Drew was a complete rewrite, but a lot of times when they'll republish, sometimes they'll update stuff. For example, I think they're reprinting Babysitter Club books and so there are certain things that are getting updated like when they're originally written diabetes was a new thing versus in the books published now diabetes is a very known and relatively simple thing to control versus before when no one knew what it was, no one had any idea what to take it. So they updated that when they re-released the book. So I'm wondering if some of those happen and they've taken away a little bit of the character or if this is true to life how Julie wrote these books. But that still doesn't excuse the way that these are written in that they say this bad thing could possibly happen. They think that maybe it won't happen. The thing happens and then we hit repeat ten times and that's the book. Oh no, snake gets bit by a snake. We fix the snake thing. Oh no, I could drown in the water. Hits head on rock. Almost drowns in the water. Oh no, the rabbit dog. Rabbit dog. Rabbit dog. Rabbit dog. Kid falls off ladder. House burns down. Falls off horse. Yeah, can we talk about that snake bite real quick? What a way to write your little brother out of the book. Because the entire, what is it, third? A third of the book, Trixie's carrying around this little brother, which I think it's hilarious when she's like, I'm going to take my brother with me, and then complains to her mother like, I don't want to take him with me. Well, the whole reason she's taking the brother with her is because she's like, I'll watch the brother so that they'll pay me. Yeah, and then immediately regrets it, which I thought was really funny. Well, yeah, little brothers are annoying. But yeah, that third of the way through the book. That gave me mild panic attacks. I was like, is that how you deal with a copperhead bite? I've lived around copperheads for 20 years and I've never known that. Well, to be fair, we didn't exactly live in the country either. We lived in the suburbs of a city. Okay, but I had a creek in my backyard. My next door neighbor had a copperhead nest that he had to get rid of. It's true, but it's more we could get to a hospital really quickly where they would have to rely on... True. That's true. Because where we grew up, we had water moccasins and copperheads and things like that, but we always knew if you get bit, you go to the hospital. That's not exactly their options. Yeah. Which, by the way, even as someone who had those options available to me, this child is five. How is the fear 
of God not been put into this child about snakes that he's just like, I'm going to go play with the snake now. Yeah, he picks the <laughs> thing up. He's like, I caught the snake and then it bit me. You don't touch snakes. Why would you catch the snake? You don't touch them. No. It's like dealing with a small dog or a cat. They're like, I caught this deadly snake. Haha, here you go. And you're like, no, but they don't speak English. He's past the age where they should have been like blanket statement. You're not allowed to play with snakes until you're old enough to discern what type of snakes are. But he's too young to discern between them. But he's not too young to know not to touch snakes. Like if you're going to live in the country life, don't, don't touch the snakes. Don't touch the snakes. You touch the snake, you could potentially die. Anyway, that was a good scene of Trixie being a good older sister, though. I just thought it was funny because the author clearly wanted to write the child out of the book so we could just have more fun kid adventures without little brother. Yes. But of all the ways, I'm gonna have him get a poisonous, potentially deadly snake bite. I'm gonna almost kill him off. Not quite, just almost. Just long enough. We only need one death in this book. No, I guess two deaths in this book because I'm counting the dog. I don't understand why they kept bringing up the dog if they were just going to shoot it. What was the point of the dog other than to scare the children periodically? Straight up because they do the whole rabies bit a bunch of times and then they're like, oh, it's probably just foaming at the mouth because it's hot. And then Jim gets sympathetic. He's like, I want to adopt it. And then Honey gets sympathetic and is like, oh, he's just more scared of us than we are of him and then they're like okay now we shoot it why why did we not have a scene of jim and this dog now being best friends i honestly don't think that dog would have stayed in the area as long as it did unless it had found a good source of food that's the thing though there was no i mean i guess it's rather overgrown i mean it may have found a good source of food or someone's trash that it could readily get in that we don't know about but that really would be the only thing that would keep it there. Otherwise, it would wander off to try to find food. Yeah, it would make more sense for it to be in the town than to be where it was. Or to be a one-time thing and then to go away. Yeah. It's just passing through. Because it it didn't treat it like it was his territory, because he popped up all the random places. But in the same general area of those three houses. It was weird. I don't know what the point of the dog was, other than to have a bunch of scares. And then to kill it. And then I don't know why they tried to make it simple sympathetic and then shoot it. I guess we need to be real depressed for this part. Yes, that dog that I've made you care about. Ha 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 ha. Not much longer. Much said. Speaking of the houses, can we talk about how gross that house was? Just hearing about it made me sick. And it's not even oh, this is a dirty house. This has been abandoned for 30 years. No one has tried to clean anything. No wonder you have pneumonia kind of house. And then they're just like, yeah, Jim, sleep in there. I I mean, if he went anywhere else, they would send him home. I mean, they didn't even really try. I do think Honey, not to super go into it, eventually Honey's family does adopt him. Yeah, they do. So I do think Honey was right and he could stay with them. I mean, if you were to explain the situation to an adult, an adult would probably help you. Unless we're talking Nickelodeon adults and they're all incompetent. We really don't see any of Honey's family in this book. And I I guess they show up in later books because after I finished this book, I read some summaries of later books and basically apparently Trixie gives Honey the courage to forge a relationship with her mom which they talk about in this book but apparently it actually happens in later books so one thing I can say is the consistency of the series is really good however or at least for the first six books that Julie wrote that being said I'm not too happy about some of the other things that happen in later books but we'll get to that there are a couple things it's like you said well it's like both of us said it's little adventures that they go on of, oh no, is this going to happen? Then this happens. And then they go on to the next. Oh no, is this going to happen? Then it happens. Over and over and over. And he gets so tired of it really quickly. And I guess she's just trying to foreshadow everything. But when you foreshadow everything, you're basically telling the book ahead of time. Like when we got to the end of the book, If something hadn't burned down in a blaze of glory because, oh my goodness, it hasn't rained in so long and the forest is just tender waiting to happen. And we keep mentioning that a forest fire would potentially take 
out both houses. Oh no. If we didn't have a blaze of glory fire, I would have been upset. Which, there is one thing. One thing she did not foreshadow. And that is chapter 16. One of the shortest chapters in the book where all that happens are there are planes flying over. One of them explodes. Oh, the random plane crash. I completely forgot about the random plane crash that has no purpose. It didn't. No, it wasn't a plane crash. The plane exploded in the sky and the pilot parachuted out, thankfully, in time and he lands in the tree on the property. You're right. I'm sorry. The random plane explosion that served no purpose that we do not talk about after the happening of it, which is never mentioned again. No, the only purpose of it was to actually have a newsworthy event for reporters to come to that house so national reporters would hear about the story. Because up until then, Trixie is all paranoid. She's like, oh no, it's going to be a national story that this dude died and they're going to care and whatever. And the entire book, I'm thinking, this is a dumb care. National reporters are not going to report on a random dude that died in in a middle of nowhere rural town and just because the town is gossiping that there's a treasure there does not mean that's going to reach New York. But the plane crash and somehow everybody reaches there in less than a minute from the town plus national reporters. I don't know how this many people got to that place so quickly. Because apparently they have nothing better to do. Honestly, it's nothing better to do. One thing that I think is really interesting and I think that highlights why a book should have a lot of literary partners and beta readers because each can pick up their own thing. For example, I pick up on misspellings and word drops like no one's business. Whereas I pick up something that happens that is written and then a paragraph later, the same thing happens again. For instance, and I have a picture of it. I don't have the page number, but Trixie's learning how to ride a horse and it's talking about the guy that takes care of the horses and in one paragraph it says he slipped the halter over a lady's head and then literally a paragraph later, it says Reagan deftly slipped the halter over Lady's head. You just did that. Not even a paragraph down. Yeah, it was in the same paragraph. In the beginning of the paragraph, halter gets slipped over. In the paragraph, halter gets slipped over. Same page. It's two different paragraphs. On page 96, she's on her hands and knees. She trips. She falls into this door. I couldn't picture this. They tried to explain it, and I just couldn't mentally picture it. There's a tree that's obstructing the entire house? That is confusing. Yeah, with the tree into the house. But I mean, it could just be an overgrown tree. And since no one's cared for this house in ages, it could have just grown up and over and into because no one's trimmed it back. So potentially that's a thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was just one of those things I really wish they had one of the pictures to explain what that looked like. Because you could go inside the house and open the windows, but the tree keeps you from seeing it from just about any angle ever, and it was very confusing. The summer house was a little bit weaker. I don't actually know why she kept that in there. It's of very little use. Yeah, nothing really happens with the summer house. It really could have just been the front porch of the house where she got bitten by a copper head. But I guess it would have been for the time period you would have had a summer house because air conditioning does not exist. Yeah. But that could have been something that if they updated the book, they probably could have gotten rid of that. Speaking of which, the artwork in the book is extremely uneven. Sometimes it's very good, and sometimes it makes no sense. For example, the entire book, they talk about how Jupiter is so big and strong, and then in the picture on 197, Strawberry is bigger than Jupiter. And Jupiter's super skinny. You did not get any direction on the horse, did you? <laughs> so the chapter headings are probably my favorite part of the book. Want to know why? Why? Because instead of being chapter headers explaining, this is generally what's going to happen in this chapter. For example, the brass key is a good chapter heading because they're looking for stuff and they find a brass key and then they don't know what the brass key goes to. It's good. Most of the other chapter headings are essentially, guess what happens for two pages? And most of the time, the last two pages that have nothing to do with the chapter. For example, there is one called Understanding Reagan. And all it means is in the beginning of the chapter, I think 
third page in, you find out that Reagan, he was an orphan and he went to a camp. And so he sympathetic to kids. Nothing to do with the other 18 pages in this chapter. Yep. Or there was one where it was, uh, I don't remember the dude's horse, but it's such and such as horse. And so you go through the entire chapter being like, okay, what is this about the horse? And then you get to the last page and it's, oh, this random dude is going to have a horse for sale in a year. That's it. Nothing to do with the mystery or the story whatsoever. God, yes. Thank you. Random name. Very helpful. So I think that's one of the biggest problems is majority of this book are fun adventures had by kids, which is fine if that's what you are into. But it hits the same problem that the box star children had, where it was advertised as a mystery series, when in reality, it was just kids having fun on their own without supervised parents. Very little to do with any mysteries. They tried to make a mystery out of the fact that the old man was going to die and his will was going to leave everything to Jim. And so they had to find the will so that everything actually would go to Jim instead of his really nasty guardian getting it, which the Nasty Guardian would have gotten it anyway, regardless of whether or not they found the will, because he is the Guardian and Jim's only, what, 16. 16, and so wouldn't get the money until 18 or 20-something. I don't know. But they find the will. It's great. And then the house burns down. And so the will is useless. I think the only purpose of finding the will was to prove that it actually goes to Jim. Yeah. Because without the will, there's no way to disperse the mansion or the land or anything like that. And then they spend so much time looking for the treasure in this house that I kind of was upset by the ending. With the fact that it burnt down or the fact that the treasure was just a ring? No, that's not the treasure. Okay, so they do find a wedding ring that they give to Jim because it's his great aunt's and apparently they meant a lot to him. But the treasure... Eventually, the house burns down because it hasn't rained in forever and they've been foreshadowing this the entire book. But in the middle of just for nothing, Trixie takes the mattress... Jim has been sleeping on and pulls it out of the house and then they just so happen to find out later haha he didn't trust his money to a bank he put it all in his mattress oh that's right it's in the <laughs> mattress I completely forgot about that but trust the bank enough to bank a trust fund for Jim he withdrew everything from that and put it into the mattress no because when the lawyer comes the lawyer's like there's a whole trust fund for Jim oh jeez there's also the point that if you don't mention in your will, hey, my money is in my mattress. No one's gonna find the money in your mattress. That was a little bit Nancy Drew of, hey, I have this will, I'm gonna give you so much stuff, but you're never gonna be able to find it. Apparently that was a trope in this time period. Ridiculous and convoluted. Anyway, this entire book, Jim and Honey, I am team Jim Honey. Like, just straight up. I think they would be such a cute couple. And I need this fan fiction. Well, they're a bit young for that. You can have PG fan fiction. I know, I know. But they're just really cute. And I think they actually bring out a really good part in each other where he encourages her to be less scared and she is the sweet one that would make him calm down a little bit from his wild ways. And it's just a good matchup. Instead, Apparently, according to your mother and the internet, he and Trixie become a thing. I don't really care either way. Partly because I'm not planning on reading into the books any further, and partly because I don't care about these characters enough to care about who's going to date who. True. There's also the thing where he's 16, he says, I only have one more year of high school, or school, until he can go to college. So unless he had a summer birthday, people must have graduated when they're 17. So now I'm really curious. I mean, if he's smart enough to get a scholarship, he may have skipped a year. That's true. Because we know in the original 1930s Nancy Drew, she's 16 and a graduate. So I do wonder if it just slowly increased over time. That's a little piece of American history I've never researched or thought to care about, but now I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> the book switches in between American and British jargon, and I'm not sure why it does that. What do you mean? For example, sometimes they call it a flashlight, and sometimes they call it a torch. I didn't notice that. 
And then sometimes they call her mom, or in Trixie's case, they call her moms, which I've heard of pops. But that's the first time I've ever seen moms. But they switch between mom and mummy. Is it maybe who's saying it? Maybe honey uses the British slang and Trixie doesn't? No, because it was straight up Trixie grabbed the flashlight. It was the narrator saying between the flashlight and the torch. And then mom and mummy was both Trixie and her younger brother, because we don't see the two older brothers in this book. It was just a random switch between the two. I didn't notice that, but I use British slang in daily life, so I'm not one to talk. Right. So the entire book, you know how... This is a big thing that Trixie's going to save up money and she's going to buy a horse, right? Where is she going to keep it? Well, they're on a farm. But they don't have any livestock. That we know of. They have chickens, but they don't have any cattle. They've got a year. Maybe they'll build a barn just for the horse. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Her parents seem okay with the idea, so they must have somewhere to put it. Or they'll buy it and they'll pay to have it kept somewhere. That's true. I can see that. Honey's family has room for a horse. Oh yeah. Now we know for sure that she has a neighbor with horses. The riding lessons? Oh my goodness. Trixie's riding lessons. I don't know why the author thought they were so freaking interesting. I hated all of them because all they ever were was Trixie wanting to do a thing. Her being told, you'll get hurt if you do that. Trixie doing the thing and getting hurt three times. Like, oh, were we right? Huh? Maybe you should listen. You should not let your horse out of a walk because you are not trained yet. Immediately, as soon as Reagan's back turn, takes her horse out of a walk and loses control of her horse and falls off. You should not, I think it was walk Jupiter, but somehow she ended on him? No, she can't ride him. They let her walk him. Yeah, you should not go on Jupiter. He is too strong for you. Tries to ride Jupiter. Gets taken across cross country riding him and only gets stopped because he gets freaked out by the black chicken of doom black chicken of doom gets thrown off and almost stepped on so that's great and then jim and honey are both trained in jumping so they can jump across stuff and trixie wants to join them for that and they're like no you can't you are going to walk around or go through the gates and thankfully i don't even remember how they managed this they convinced her not to so thankfully she is not dead. You know, from that or jumping out of a boat in shallow water and slamming her head into a rock. Oh, can we talk about how concussions aren't a thing in this book? Trixie gets concussed in the river and we never talk about it. And Jim gets concussed falling off a ladder. We never talk about that either. Everything's fine. And I bet Trixie was definitely more concussed because after she got out of the water, she's weak and dizzy. Yeah. On Jim's, I will accept Jim's because he has done horseback riding and he's... I'm actually a little surprised they don't teach them that because if you're in any sport and there is a chance you can fall and receive injury, you learn how to fall. In gymnastics, you know how to fall from a balance beam. You know how to fall from a tumble on the floor. If you're on vaults, if you're doing uneven bars, whatever it is, you learn how to fall. And so I am convinced because he's done horseback so long, he's learned how to take a fall, which he does. It's basically you go very limp because if you go rigid, it will hurt your body more. You have to go limp and then go with the fall. So I'm okay with that. But Trixie straight up hits her head on a rock, dives straight into a rock, drives into shallow water, hits her head on a rock. I think she passes out, doesn't she? She does. She passes out. Honey has to drag her out of the water. And she comes back too, and she's too limp to row a boat. And her head hurts and all of this stuff. And she didn't half drown. She was underwater and Honey had to drag her out. But no, she didn't inhale any water. No, apparently it was too shallow for that. (laughs) But as someone who has had a very bad concussion, you don't just walk away from that. That's the one thing I didn't understand is she acts like she's concussed for a good part of the book. But they get back and then I'm pretty sure she goes horseback. Let me check. Let me look up the concussion because I think she goes horseback riding later that day. Let me find it. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's what she does. She gets home and she starts helping her mom with garden work. Yeah. She's just like, I'm fine now. She's so weak. She can't paddle a boat. She's in this boat. They get back finally because Honey figures out how to row a boat. She walks all that distance back to the farm and instead of going to bed or seeing a doctor... She just goes up to her mom and helps her with the yard work for a couple hours. I was like, oh yeah, that's fine. Slammed my head into a rock. Passed out. Possibly damaged my brain, but you know, I'm fine. That's the other thing. She should have 
I think it mentions she has a knot or something, but her mom's just like, yes, come help me with garden work. I don't care that your head's hurt. It's visibly obvious that you have a massive lump on your head, but it's more important that you water my tomatoes. It's like, kids will be kids. <laughs> See, that's a don't go to sleep one. But of course, you know, it's very, very recent that concussions have been studied and found out and all that stuff. There was actually, I think it was my husband's great aunt that every time they even got a bump on their head, she'd be like, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep, because her sister had gotten a concussion and she had passed away in her sleep, but this was obviously before they knew what a concussion was. And so that was always the trigger for her. It was like, you get a bump head, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep. And so I feel like that is one of the bumps where she'd be like, I'm tired, and then not wake up the next day because that was very intense. Which king was married to Anne Boleyn? King Henry the Eighth. I know the fact about him. I couldn't remember which king it was. There's too many Henrys. But anyway, but he had actually slammed his head into something and given himself a really nasty concussion. And since they didn't know anything about concussions, the fact that he was acting strange and his personality had changed was odd, but no one had really knew why it happened. But it happened because of the concussion. Uh, or what they think had happened was that he had a concussion, but that's why he, you know, started acting differently and ended up not getting along with Anne anymore and then having her eventually beheaded. There's a lot of things in the brain you can hit and just mess yourself up. Our squishy little wonderful thingy does a lot. It doesn't need to be jarred around. You don't need to be diving in shallow water. There are a bunch of injuries they just don't take seriously. The only one that it seems to be extremely accurate is the snake bite. And I mean, heck, if it educated some kids on what to do if there's a snake bite, awesome. That's really good. If, they, if you get bitten by a snake, you call 911. You get an ambulance out there to take you to the hospital right now. Yes. That's what you do. I mean, now that is what you do. Or if you're in a rural area, you have a snake bite kit like the doctor gives the family. Yeah. If you're in a rural area, you should already have a snake bite kit. But this book was... I don't know. The book was a little insufferable in the beginning, but halfway through, I was like, you know what? This isn't so bad. I started reading the book for Honey and Jim, and then we get to the end, and I was really pissed off that Jim just straight up disappeared. And they were like, well, we're going to go find him. And I was like, well, do they? It's like at the end of the movie, The Mist, where the guy kills off everybody because he thinks that they're all going to be eaten by the monsters, and he doesn't want them to have to go through that, and they agree to it, and then he gets out of the car, except the fact that he's gonna have to get eaten by monsters because they only had so many bullets and then the fog clears and the military runs through and all of the monsters are gone how is this anything to do well because the house burns down and jim runs away right and then a lawyer comes and it's like oh yeah i've come to solve all the problems and like oh well jim's already gone that is not like a dude murdering his entire family They were gonna die anyway. Disagree. They were. They were all like, we're gonna die anyway. Suicide pact. It was a really, don't watch The Mist. I already know the movie. I'm just saying that had nothing to do with this book. (laughs) That's the feeling set that I got from that and this. They are the same in my brain. The set of feelings for me were very similar. (laughs) Just the outrage at the absurdity of the timing of the things. Yeah. Which, honestly, the only thing I would want to know is at the end of this book, the lawyer wants to adopt Jim. And they're like, okay, well, we're gonna go hunt him down so he doesn't go be part of a cattle boat and we never see him again. So they come up with this ingenious plan that they're gonna go search for him with Honey's nanny and they're gonna go in this little little caravan thing, whatever. And so I I looked it up and that is actually the plot of the next book. So, I mean, props for continuing that. That's always something I really like when an author does. And if it's a serialized book that they keep the plot going, it continues from one book to the next. What I don't understand is what happens to that lawyer? Because in book three, Honey's family adopts him. Maybe the lawyer changes his mind? Maybe Honey's family talks him into letting them adopt him? Well, all I can figure is maybe I'm convinced that the mystery of the next book ends with the lawyer either dying or finding out some not-so-great stuff about him. Maybe. But it's probably yours and really boring and makes it would make me sad. But if that would be the mystery ticks of the next book, that would be worth reading. But it's probably not. So I'm making it more interesting in my head. Like I made this book more interesting in my head when I saw the cover on that and read the back. (laughs) I'm sorry. But is my hope. I am really upset that it's Jim and 
Trixie, though. Apparently, Honey and one of Trixie's older brothers kind of have a thing for each other. Yeah. But Jim and Trixie become super romantic, and then the original author stopped writing the books, and so they kind of drew back on the romance of the two of them, because she only wrote the first six books in the series, which is a lot, which is really cool for the creator of the book, yeah. especially in this time period. But she wrote two series, like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Trixie Belden is the first one. The second one was this other book which it was basically a watered down Trixie, but in the city. And the critical opinion seems to be it's not very good. Well, then I guess it's not very good. Yeah, because when I first saw it, I'd be like, oh, that'd be pretty interesting seeing how a different setting would change things. Because a core value of Trixie's personality is she is country. So it would have been interesting to see how much that would change. But apparently it's not good, so never mind. That's kind of sad. It was not good enough to get revived in 2003. So you can just imagine what that one's like. So what are your general thoughts on this? I didn't like it. I still don't like it. I'm probably never going to read it again. Probably not going to let my children read this book. Well, if they ask me if they can read this book, I'll let them read this book. But I'm not going to openly be like, read this book. Yeah. Read it. It's good. Because it's not. Yeah. Like I said, it reminds me of the boxcar children. Boxcar children, I also think are kind of boring. Because they get advertised like it's a mystery series. And it's not. It's an adventure series with kids kids to do fun things like horseback riding at midnight and surviving snake bites and paddling canoe away from a rabid dog. That's what this is about. This is not about a will and a mystery to find it because all they really do is search the house three times. It gets caught on fire. They pull the mattress out and then they find the money. There is no other steps here that make it a mystery. It's not a mystery. It's a scavenger hunt. It's not even a scavenger hunt because there is nothing that leads to anything. There's a brass key that leads to the summer house, which is that in. They happen to find a will in a random Bible. They get lucky that Trixie decides to be super rude about this painting and pokes an apple and finds a ring. And then they happen to pull out the mattress. None of these items are connected to each other. It's pointless. It's utterly pointless. And it's a suspense more than it is a mystery. So if your kids are, or you, I guess, are super into that kind of thing, go for it. But it's not what it advertises itself as. And so that's kind of disappointing. It's definitely not our cup of tea. Also, I will never fall for poor little rich girl because that is a dumb trope. I wish Honey was the main character. That would have been more interesting. That would have been having that duality of her being around two super country people and her having to get over her stuff. Like, her nightmares would be very interesting. Yes. She seems to be a more complex thought-wise character, so she probably would have been more fun to have if we're going to spend that much time in someone's head. One question for the author. I don't have one. I kind of want to know why Trixie is so purposely unlikable in the beginning, and then she spends the entirety of the book trying to make up for that. No, I do have one. Why snake bite to write out the little brother? I mean, it was effective. It was, but, or even better, why did you kill off the dog? That's, that would be a good question too. Why did you do all of this stuff to kill off the dog? And maybe it's just another time and people didn't sugarcoat their stories then and whatever, but it's definitely a statement to have your first book in a children's series where you kill the dog after making him sympathetic to your audience. Yeah. It's a statement piece. Would you read it again? No. 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 I feel like when you read it once, you kind of get the idea from it. Like I said, if you're into kid adventures, go for it. I mean, it's actually a pretty good book for that. But if you're wanting a mystery, which I was going in thinking it's a mystery, being a book called Secret of the Mansion, and the back of the book making it sound like, oh, goodness, we need to do this. I would have liked it so much better if there had been a mystery involved, because then all of the random shenanigans would have been going towards solving the mystery, and I would have been okay with that. It would have been okay. And at least Trixie's thoughts could have been about the mystery. But as it is, it's Trixie wishing that the dude is dead, her finding out about Jim, deciding she doesn't want the dude to die, and then he dies. And I mean, his death is more of a suspense point than a mystery. 
because it's will he die will he die will he die oh he died now what it's not a mystery there is no secret in this mansion mainly because clearly it wasn't a secret if the whole town knew about it oh that's two what would you rate it a two i give it a two i have no scale it just gets a two an actual number an actual number i think it's watching your annoying brother of 10 i can agree with that having a little brother i i can agree with that it's not the worst thing that could happen but you sure wish you could be doing something else yeah it's a two so thank you so much for listening to this episode you can keep up to date with us by checking us out on twitter or instagram and you can help support our podcast by checking out our patreon where for just one dollar a month you can get access to all of our bonus episodes where we look at a movie adaptation to some of your favorite books this month we're looking at the second harry potter book harry potter and the chamber of secrets join us next time we'll be going through a book called the ranger's apprentice ruins of gorlin by john flanagan we're going through this book accidentally find out more next time thank you so much for hanging out with us today i'm sam reiner and i'm lizzie sawyer and we hope to see you and a friend here next time